One thing I want to say to you is that um, those those who are seeking knowledge, if, if Iblis can't get you to seek the, you know, you're seeking knowledge, he's going to get certain people to seek the wrong knowledge. Or he'll get certain people to waste their time in their knowledge. And some people who are trying to do actions, he's going to try and make them do the less, le the, the, the one that has got less virtue, he'll try and make them do that action. So Iblis has got many of these different things. But nevertheless, if we come to... Um, <clears throat> The, uh, the ayah, when he actually said, you know when he gave his analogy and said that I am better than Adam, when he said that, straight away Allah had said to him, Fakhrud, you, you are now, get out of here. When Allah said get out of here, what Allah meant is that you have lost your position. If that ayah meant you get out of here, as in you leave this place right now, then there wouldn't have been any more conversation that would have followed. But there was conversation that followed on. So when Allah said, Fakhruj minha, you get out of here, Allah meant that you are no longer amongst the high prestigious, you know, high ranking angels that are close to me. You have dropped your position from them. Now you do not belong from, from, from those. Now, instead of Iblis, uh, and, and sorry, Allah added another thing to that. He said, according to Surah Al Hijr and according to Surah Sad, Allah said, Wa inna alayka la'anata, wa inna alayka la'anati ila yawmidin. Until the day of resurrection, until the day of recompense, my wrath, my anger, my curse is upon you. So Iblis, and they say that that's one of the reasons why Iblis is called Iblis because he's been cursed by, by God. Now that he got the curse, that's when he asked, okay, give me time till the day of judgment. He got that time and now he started to say these things. Allah in return said to him, he's, you know, in return, there's a wonderful passage in Surah Isra, ayah number 61 to 65. Now, you can see, if you put all these together, you can see what's going through um, Iblis's mind. He says to Allah in this ayah, he says, Ara'ayta ka hadha alladhi karramta alayya? He says, God... You know, you see this creature of yours that you've just given preference to him over me. Now look at look at what he's actually saying. You know, you, you see this creature of yours that you've given preference to him over me. Laina khartani. Now that you've given me time until the day of judgment, la ahtanikana dhuriyatahu illa qalila. I'm going to lead all his progeny except for three of them towards Jahannam towards you know towards the wrong pathway Allah says idhab go go ahead go ahead this is again idhab here doesn't mean get out of here or go away from here it means go ahead go ahead with what you've just planned faman tabi'aka minhum because whoever will follow you now we, there's a big lesson in this faman tabi'aka whoever will follow you fa inna jahannama jaza'ukum jaza'an mawfura then jahannam or the, the hellfire is your full recompense, your full you know, punishment, a, a, a full type of punishment that I'm going to give you in return of that. Now notice Allah says, Faman tabi'aka, whoever will follow you. Iblis cannot make anyone follow him. It is only a human being's choice to follow Iblis. That's why Allah said in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, O you who believe, la tattabi'u, don't start closely following khutuwati shaitan, the steps of the shaitan. Because shaitan will only lead mankind. He will never, you know, the thing is, it's a bit like, um, you know, you get different types of criminals. One criminal is the type that he will actually force you to do something. So imagine, a criminal came up to you and he put a gun to your head and he said, listen, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to, um, you know, kill maybe your family members if you don't actually kill this person, right? So this person is now forced to go and commit that crime. That's one thing. A second type of criminal, he won't go through that pathway. He's not going to force him at all. What he will do is he'll set things up he'll stitch the other person up in such a way, he'll frame him in such a way that this person goes mad and kills him with his own intention. So for example, what he might do in the second situation is he might set the scenario up where this other person seems like he has caused a lot of hurt to him when that other person hasn't. And, and he'll put them into the room where he suddenly sees that you're the cause of all this grief I've had. You know, he sees all the evidence in front of him, which is really not true evidence. And this person 
spontaneously, voluntarily goes and murders this other person. Now, Iblis is of the second type. He sets things up. He never forces anyone. That's why his crime on the Day of Judgment is only his own crime. His biggest crime is that he never listened to God to bow down. That's his biggest crime. And that's why Iblis will end up in the fourth hellfire when others will end up in the fifth and the sixth and the seventh deepest part of hellfire because they did worse crimes than him. His crime is not as bad as some of the crimes that come, you know, are committed by certain people. Because Iblis only leads, he only shows the way. That's what he does. So it's almost like, you know, if he, if he knew that, imagine that um, th th there's a, um, imagine that if, if I just take an example of, of a jungle or something and, you know, you see, it, you see a wonderful sort of, you know, li little rabbit or something and you want to catch that rabbit and that rabbit is hopping, 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 hopping. But that rabbit is an evil rabbit because what he's doing is the rabbit knows that a head is, is, a, is a lion or something or a pack of wolves and he's going to you know dig into the earth before he gets eaten up so what he does is that he jumps and hops and jumps and hops and you kind of follow him you kind of follow him until you're trying to catch him and next minute you know is that you're surrounded by this pack of wolves and the rabbit has disappeared into the ground right that's Iblis's type what Iblis does is that he leads people and he gives them you know Allah said here he said a few things. He says, Wastafziz manistata minhum. So Allah says, You should try you go ahead and these are the these are the things he has is he will try and make something serious seem non serious. Allah said, Go ahead and make um with Bisotik with your voice, with your voice, try and make the progeny of Adam feel something that is serious for them to feel that is not serious for something that is serious for them to feel is not serious now guys this is exactly what's happening if i told you yeah there's a there's a there's a room on fire there's a room let's say there's a fire here burning right and the smoke coming out of there now the whole room is not on fire but it's just one corner has got some coal or something burning and the smoke coming right inside this, inside this um, sort of room or hall. And if I told you, go up to the corner and not start sniffing the smoke, who would do that? Who would do that? None of you, right? Now, if I could make somebody do that and harm himself by thinking it's fun, that's shaitan, he's done his trick. So what does he do? He makes, he takes leaves. He made some human being find leaves, large leaves. They dried up, right? He makes it roll it up. And then he puts it to his mouth and he says, <laughs> smoke it. It's fun. This is exactly what, the, now this is just one example, guys, this is one example. All, many of the sins that are committed, they're under this. Allah said, you will go ahead and you will make seem that thing that is serious, not serious. Now it's serious. This research is saying that these guys are harming their lungs. They're harming their body. They're knocking off five years of their life. They're probably going to go towards cancer. They're probably going to, going to harm you know, others that are around them as well. And yet they are hooked onto smoking and... And the shaitan makes them feel that they're relieving stress. I feel bad, man. Who's saying that? That's the shaitan making them feel that like something that is seriously bad for them seem that it's not seriously bad for them. And then he gets some then other things like drugs. Now drugs, we all know that it's going to kill people, it's going to harm their bodies, make them vomit, it's going to make them, you know, be d dysfunctional and so on. But what do people do? What does what shaitan do? The shaitan made them feel that it's fun how he got young people and young people like to break the rules. How did he make them do that? Well, he made them feel that the rules are a bit too much for them. They need a break. And the break is to break the rule. Instead of taking a break and relax, well, let's break the rule. I don't want to be under rules. Whether it's parents, elders, uncles, aunties, the system, the school, the headmaster, whatever. It at least makes them feel, well, I don't like them because they in a the world, they don't understand me. So once he's done that, it's serious to, to, to challenge authority, it's serious. But he makes him make it feel like it's fun to challenge that authority. Again, you look at Allah saying here, that's what he's done. Now once he makes them challenge the, 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 um, 
system, this group of young people, what do they do? They sit down and say, look, let's try this out, man. Come on. They dare each other. They try and make it fun. And who's doing that? Well, it's, it's Iblis and his men behind that. Iblis and his jeans behind that, you know, they're saying, go on, go on. Try it out, man, try it out, man. <laughs> it must be fun, man. He gets them on a hype. Young people, you know, they, 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 they're agile, they're invincible, they can do what they want, they've got strong bodies, whatever. What's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen. See, again, they're taking something, making something light, which is something really serious. So then they try it. And what Shaitan wants to do is, he wants them to do it again until they feel that there's nothing wrong with it. Until they're hooked on to it. Until the bodies need it. And then shaitan can sit back. And all he did is he showed them the way. He made something look uh, funny when it was something that was damaging. Something that was damaging, he made it look funny to them. And they got onto it and then they get hooked on to it. Right? Um, Allah uh, just uses the word besotic with your voice. Now, one, one thing with the voice is waswasa, which is that he comes into, the, into a person's heart, right? He comes into the mind and he starts saying, and he starts speaking with, along you. He never, says, he never says to a human being, go and do that. Hey, hey, Hassan, hey, you know, Zulfikar, do it. Now, if he ever said that to you, you say, hey, who just called my name out? Who just, who just called him out? No, you, you'd wake up. He never says that. He gets into the human body and he starts talking along with your normal conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I don't like him there. You know, I, I think he's got a serious problem. Yeah, yeah, he does have a serious problem. I mean, yeah, you know the time he was, he was like, you know, looking at me. He must have stared at me for a wrong reason. I don't think he likes me. Yeah, he's fine. Next time I see him, I'm going to look at him carefully. I think, right, I, I, I think he's got, he's got prejudice, I think he's racist, yeah, he must be racist, yeah. I mean, who's saying all of this? Who's prompting this person up? It's shaitan with his waspasa. And that's what he does, he just talks normally with the person as if it's him speaking to himself and he doesn't know that shaitan. That's why the only way to stop yourself from going through this is the dhikr of Allah. It's absolutely clear. That in the, from the Quran and the Sunnah, the only way to get yourself protection from this is the dhikr of Allah. Now, bisotik, the ulama of tafsir have said one was his voice which, which was the um, the whisperings but another one is music another one is music and that is very clear many mufassirin have said including abdullah bin mas'ud who is one of the early mufassirs of the quran the direct companion of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that this refers to music so what he will do is through him using either a song or a tune or actually using his whistling or his using his vocal sounds or whatever it is he will make people feel that something which is serious is not too serious so what happens is that when a person is listening to music what the, what will what will happen to them is they are going you know why is why is a person listening to music there for, for different reasons one of the reasons is because they're trying to get away from stress. One of the reasons is because they're in love with someone so they need to listen to that music. Another one is because they think it's just a pastime. Another one is because they think it actually sounds nice. All right? These are many reasons why people listen to the, to the music. But ultimately, what they don't see is his footsteps. Where is he leading you? It's not about what he's got to you, you into today. It's where is he taking you? Where is that rabbit taking you? Which pack of wolves are going to take you out once he takes you to their den? So the person will start by listening to all of this and he t thinks he's... There's nothing wrong with it. There are, there are people amongst his ummah who say there's nothing wrong to li you know, listen to music. Uh, whereas Rasulullah has said that there will be, now listen to this very carefully, there will be a, a group of my ummah near the end of time who will allow four things that have been prohibited. Four things that have been prohibited. Yastahillun al hira wal harir they will make aloud for this for themselves and tell the ummah that it is okay they will say that adultery or prostitution is allowed that they can more pornography or adultery prostitution whatever is allowed number one number two is silk for men for men to wear silk 
they will say that is fine for them to do that. Number three is um, al khamr It is um, alcohol or wine intoxicants. That's number three. And number four is ma'azif, musical instruments. Musical instruments. So it's a Sahih Hadith in Bukhari that in my ummah there's going to be near the end of time, you know, my, part of my ummah, they will try and allow these four things. Either all four or one of the four, they will allow that. And again, if you go, go across the world, you will find people who have done each one of these. Each one of these. And coming to the musical instruments one, um, to, to make one feel that what's wrong with musical instruments? That's what he'll say. He'll say, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with this? There's nothing wrong with it. That's, that's, it's, that's what Allah said. That He will do that. He will make something seem a light matter when it's a serious matter. Joking about something which is serious is one way of shaitan. So, you know the munafiqeen and the hypocrite in the Prophet's time, they used to make jokes sometimes about God, they used to make jokes about the Prophet and they used to make jokes about the ayats of the Quran or the Quran itself. And they make certain jokes. So I know that a lot of prevailing jokes, this is another thing I might as well mention as a lesson coming from this is, you know when you've got around, text message comes to you with a joke on it, and sometimes you read a joke, do not, and, and there, are, there are many jokes out there like that, there's jokes about God, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are jokes about, about Jesus, there's a lot of jokes about Jesus or Moses, right, I think they don't want to joke about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they think they're probably going to end up dead, right, which is uh, alhamdulillah, if they've got that in their minds, Allah has protected our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Not, but, but saying that, there's many of them still now trying to make their effort to try and make those jokes about our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there's jokes about these prophets out there. There's jokes about Nuh as well. If you come across a joke, whether it's in a textual format, whether a friend tells you that, whether it's on, a, well, it's on your message, and it's about God, it's about Allah, it's about Musa, Moses, it's about Jesus, Isa, it's about Muhammad. I know with Muhammad sallallahu many of you will just go crazy. But with Jesus or Isa, with Musa or Moses, with Allah or God, you're supposed to have the same reaction. You're supposed to think, what? I can't laugh at this. This is not a joke. Don't, don't laugh at jokes that are made about God because to do that is kufr. If you actually find it funny to laugh at Isa alayhi salam, to laugh at Musa alayhi salam, to laugh at God who is Allah, if you find it funny to do that, then there is a serious question about your iman, whether your iman is there or not. Many of the ulama will say that if you found it halal, halal to joke about God and his messengers, you've lost your iman, you've lost your faith, because we just don't do this. So one of the things that he will do again is that he will try and make people joke around with these things, joke around with serious matters. And Allah said in the Holy Quran in Surah Tawbah, قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَعْزِئُونَ What with Allah, with the messenger, with, with uh, his signs or his verses, are you going to make jokes? You're going to crack jokes? That is one of the reasons why I think many of you probably know by now and I think it has been highlighted that, you know, when you had that Hamza, uh, the diary of a bad man or something, right? You had the diary of a bad man on YouTube, I think it went crazy last year or something. And there were jokes in there to do with, you know, you know we don't take the joke out of the beard. We don't take the joke out of a sister and a hijab. And as Muslims, we don't take the joke because these are commands that are found in the Quran and the Sunnah. So any command in the Quran and Sunnah, you don't joke with. And if you joke with, then it's a question about your faith or it's a question about your loyalty to Allah and His Messenger. So that's why that diary of a bad man or any, any other thing that comes out like that, where jokes are being made about things that are Allah's command. And, and you know, it's like things that you should do and then you're there taking the mick out of it or take, making a joke out of it. This is the, this is the way of the shaitan. Because what he will do is he'll make you seem like that and eventually he'll make people move away from that. So that's one thing about, about music itself uh, that, that shaitan will use. The other one uh, Allah said is alayhim wa You bring your cavalry, your horses, trample over them with your horses. Bring your cavalry onto them or with anyone who is walking, anyone who is... Um, who is on, uh, anyone who is on a conveyance, anyone who is walking in, the, in my disobedience, you set those people on them. 
And what you do is Allah is telling him these are going to be his snares, these are going to be his tools. وَشَارِكْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ And make them, make them sort of uh, mix up their wealth and mix up their children. Now what does he mean? Mix up their wealth and mix up their children. Uh, when Allah said that, Wa'idhum, and He told him, give them promises, meaning give them false promises. Go ahead, Allah said, go ahead and take your kabul onto them and go and mix mix them. And because what Allah is saying later on is, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. You have no power over my true servants. No power over them. Wa kafa bi rabbika wakila, and your Lord, who is myself, Allah, I am enough as a protector over them. Now, what did Allah say here uh, with His tools that He takes His cavalry up over them, and anyone who's walking on a conveyance, He uses them. What that means is that Shaitan will look at anyone who's got a similar mind to Him. And there are many Shaitans, many devils who are human beings, which we don't even think of them as devils. Guys, wake up because the last ayah of the Quran tells us min al jinnati wan nas. You're supposed to think of the um, the devils as, as twofold. One is that it's the invisible you can't, one you can't see, and one is the visible one you can see, but many of the human beings don't see him as a shaitan. So if you've got a human being, whether it's your friend, whether it's your close one, and they call you to evil, that is a devil, that is a shaitan. That is one of the cavalries of the shaitan who will try and take you towards the wrong thing. And when Allah said for them to mix, for, for a shaitan to make them mix their wealth and mix their children, what he's talking about is halal with haram, haram with halal. See, what, what happens, for example, you've got halal money, the moment you take something haram towards yourself, you've become a trap of the shaitan. You've become someone who will be easily taken by the shaitan. So that famous hadith says that there's a, there's a man who is traveling very far and he's in the middle of the desert, Ashhath Aghbar, he's completely disheveled, he's got tatty hair, he's got dusty clothes, and um, you know, he, Yarfa'u Yadayhi la sama, he raises his hands towards the um, Sky, the Sahih Hadith in Muslim, he says, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. He says, My Lord, my Lord. He's completely in need of Allah's help. Now, the Hadith say that, you know, when a Musafir is making dua to Allah, Allah answers his dua. The Hadith says, especially when there's someone who's in help and in need and they make such a great dua, it's, it's answered. But this Hadith in Muslim says, Fa'anna yustajabula. How will Allah answer his, his dua? Why? Um, uh, um, uh, he, he's eating akluhu haram, matabuhu haram. He's eating, he's taking certain elements that were haram in his mouth. Mashrabuhu haram, he's drunk something which is haram. Malbasuhu haram, he's worn something which is haram. Wa ghudiya bil haram, he's been nurtured in a haram way. Fa'anna yustajabula. So, how will his dua be accepted? So, what that means is that when shaitan can make somebody use their money from halal to haram, halal to haram to halal, and there are many examples that. Like guys, be, you know, there's people out there with businesses ripping people out there every single day, be ripping people off. Muslims who are doing this, now, no, non-Muslims, okay, it exists, please, you know, I'm not here to discuss about non-Muslims, but some Muslims, not all Muslims, but some Muslims are doing that, you know, they, they will just look for that opportunity, just that little opportunity to try and rip somebody off by not telling them about something they're getting into and to take the money off them and later on, you know, do their toba or something, you know. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that because you've just taken some haram monies in there. As soon as you take some form of haram money in there, you have been affected. This is by the Quran, I'm telling you, you have been affected. You will have ikhtilaf, you will have dissension in your house. You will have people who are normally good with you, fall out with you. You will have your wife, you will have your children not listen to you or obeying you. These are from the Quran and Hadith. Allah said in the Quran, you know, one of the things straight away shaitan will do in terms of the, the prohibition of alcohol and if people start to sell the, sell the liquor and so on, is that he will make yasuddakum an dhikrillahi wa salah. He will stop them from, shaitan will stop them from the remembrance of God and he will stop them from actually praying. And another one he's, he said is that Baghda. He said, Innama Allah, Allah said that he, Allah, um, the shaitan will be allowed to cause dissension, hatred, enmity amongst yourselves if you indulge in what? In gambling, if you indulge in intoxicants, if you indulge in divination and so on. Shaitan will be allowed, allowed to do that. So that means a gambler will never have satisfaction with his friends and with people who are. He, 
is with. And Allah only gave two examples. So all the people who had drugs, why, why do one? Why does one person who's on drugs try and kill another person who's on drugs? Because the enmity, the facade. You know, all these people who are out there, you know, your MCs, this and your big, you know, and the rap stars who've got rings all over them and they've got chains all over them. You know, these are shayateen. These are shayateen, clear shayateen, and they're the cavalry of the shaitan who are luring other people towards that way. And what do they have? They have arrogance, the same arrogance as Iblis. They have jealousy amongst them, the same pride and jealousy that Iblis had. And they're luring other people towards that way. And they want girls for themselves, they want drugs for themselves. This is shari kum fil amwali wal awlad. What are they doing? They're having children where Allah hasn't given them permission to have children. They're sleeping with women where Allah has told them not to sleep with those women because they're not married to them. This is shari kum fil, fil awlad. You know, they're, they're intertwined, they're, you know, their connection, the whole lineage of human beings, they corrupt that. So there are children that are born out of wed wedlock. Children are born out of wedlock. And you know, they think that's completely fine. You know, this woman's got this many kids, that one, this many kids, so what? I don't care. This whole thing corrupts. These are the major things, in the major reasons why human society will be corrupt. Another one is in terms of our transactions, you don't keep it halal. So, you know, subhanAllah al azim, you think about, you know, Imam Abu Hanifa in his time, he stopped once eating. This is in his seerah. He stopped consuming the meat of a goat for 12 years. For 12 years he didn't eat, he didn't eat any goat meat. Right? And somebody asked him the reason why he doesn't eat goat meat. So he said that once in his lifetime somebody came to him and told him that my goat has been stolen. So Imam Abu Hanifa went to the farmers and he asked them, he said, how long is the maximum time a goat can live? And the farmers, he found out from the farmers that it was 12 years. So for the next 12 years, Imam Abu Hanifa made it haram unto himself to eat any goat's meat just in case that one goat, goat's meat might end up on his plate. Imagine the, the level of taqwa that, that he had. Now I'm not saying to you guys to stop eating everything out there because it's all haram out there. But I'm just giving you an example of the, the, the taqwa or the level of God consciousness or God fearing element they had in, in the past. So this thing about sharikum fil amwali wal awlad and the next thing Allah says, wa'idhum, give them false promises. So what shaitan does is, you know, one of the things that's mentioned clearly in the Quran in Surah Baqarah is, uh, as shaitanu ya'idukum al faqra. Shaitan will give you a false promise or a fear inside you that you will become poor if you spend in the path of God. He will give you that false promise. So he's giving you a promise, you know, you better not, no, I better, he won't say you better, he'll say, I better not spend it because I'm going to lose this. This is one way. There are many other ways where he'll give false promise. You know, nothing will happen here, nothing will, nothing will harm me and so on. It's all right, it's all right. Again, thinking that it's a light matter when it's a serious matter. These are some of the ways that he will, he will do that. Now, at the end of all of this, I've, I've just discussed obviously Surah al um, the ayah Surah Isra from 61 to 65 today. But in the, all of this, what Allah says is that you will not be able to have an influence on my true servants. And they are the mukhlasin. The mukhlasin are those. Now, if you want to become a person who's of the mukhlasin, um, they are those people whom Allah has created who may do little as actions, but they do it sincerely for Allah's sake. If you can make whatever ibadah, whatever action you're doing, just think of Allah and no one else, you do that, shaitan will have the lowest and the lightest influence on you from amongst all the other people when your actions are for the sake of Allah.